Hey guys, Austin here, and on today's episode, we are talking all things desk setups. But before we get into it, let me grab my teeny weeny beanie. It's a teeny weeny beanie. <laughs> Just roll the B roll. So desk setups, I have two of them, as you can see, to share with you today. I have my Mac setup and my PC setup. The Mac setup being for photo and video editing and the PC setup being for gaming. There's a garbage can outside, garbage truck banging around. This video actually does have a sponsor in Vitraza. Huge shout out to them for being willing to sponsor my second ever YouTube video. I promise I will try my best to make it a good one, but we're gonna talk more about them in a little bit. For now, we are gonna start over here on my gaming setup because it's the one I built most recently and I'm pretty stoked on the way it turned out. All right, so what better place to start with the gaming setup than with the PC itself? So I built this PC. Um, it's in the NZXT H510 flow case. It's got a Ryzen 9 5950X, 32 gigs of RAM, an RTX 4080, and three terabytes of SSD storage. This PC definitely is a little overkill for the games that I play on a day-to-day -day basis, but I wanted something that was very future-proof that I wouldn't have to worry about upgrading anytime soon so that as new games come out that are more demanding, I could just play them without any worry. The PC is running into these two LG monitors here. I don't remember the exact model names, but I'm gonna do my best to link everything that I talk about in the description below so you can find them the exact ones I'm using down there. But they're 27 inches, 1440p, 165 hertz refresh rate with a one millisecond response time. I've wanted to try this monitor orientation for years now, so when I built this new gaming setup, I wanted to give it a shot and I've really liked it so far. I'm using two monitor arms to, to pull this off. I have one that I've had for years from Evo that's been really great, and then I got an extra tall one from Vivo which has also been solid. Underneath the monitor, I have this modded Ekb Alex shelf unit from Ikea. I removed one of the drawers and left the backing off so I could run cables through and I could fit in this Sonos Ray sound bar. To be honest, the reason I picked up the Sonos Ray is because it fits within this uh, shelving unit and looked super nice in the setup, but I have been pretty impressed with the sound that it delivers. For my keyboard, I'm using the Halo 75 from Numfi. Um, solid keyboard, great price. Um, I've switched out the switches on mine for some Gateron G White Clear Pro switches. Those are my preferred ones for gaming and here's how they sound. For my mouse, I'm using the Logitech G Pro X Superlight in white. I have used this mouse ever since it came out a few years ago. I've gone through like three of them. It is by far my favorite mouse for gaming. New mice have come out since that are on paper technically better than this mouse, but I just love the shape and the performance of this one, so I keep using it. For the mouse pad, I'm using just a cheap Logitech G640 mouse pad. It's honestly one of my favorites that I've tried. I've tried a ton of different mouse pads and I always come back to the G640. It's got great performance, it's cheap, so when you wear it out, you can easily replace it. Yeah, solid mouse pad. My headphones of choice for the gaming setup are the Sennheiser IE 300s. These are in-ear monitors that sound fantastic and they're super comfortable to wear for, for long gaming sessions. These plus my microphone of choice, which is the Shure MV7, uh, both plug into my Scarlett Solo. This is a pretty inexpensive audio interface that's plug and play with PC. I have it mounted under the desk and it's worked flawlessly since I got it. Oh, and before I forget, the MV7 is sitting on the Elgato Wave LP mic arm. I also have a desk camera mount off to the side. This usually houses my Sony a7 IV and it's connected to the PC using one of Elgato's 4K cam links. I use this a lot for taking video calls and meetings because my Mac desk looks really good in the background. So I just take all my Zoom meetings on the gaming setup. But I have tossed around the idea of streaming. Um, I'm just not quite sure it's something I wanna do, but if it's something that you'd watch or like to see, maybe a couple live streams here and there, make sure to let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Speaking of streaming, I do have an Elgato Stream Deck sitting on my desk. Like I said, I don't stream yet. This mostly gets used for launching games I'm playing right now, controlling Spotify or Discord or things like that. I have a few decorations on the gaming setup. Uh, first being this lamp here. I am not gonna try and pronounce the name, but I will put it right here <laughs> for you. Um, I also have an old film camera. This actually belonged to my uncle and it matches nicely with the one that's on 
my Mac setup, which we'll get to in just a minute. And then I also have a little Link Amiibo shout out Byte Review. We have the same one and that makes me feel pretty cool. <laughs> And this whole setup is built on the Bacant desk from Ikea. And that's the whole gaming setup. But before we move over to the Mac setup here, a uh, huge shout out to Vitraza for sponsoring this video. All right, if you're like me and you love building different desk setups and you're really into the aesthetic of it all, then you have unfortunately come across these at some point. These plastic cheap chair mats that we usually get on Amazon for like 20 to 40 bucks that after a couple months dent and crack and develop ruts for your chair. They're just awful, but lucky for us, Vitraza has come to save the day with their glass chair mats. These chair mats are built from a solid piece of glass that won't dent or crack over time. They also look great and will definitely elevate the aesthetic of your setup. Each mat comes in a variety of different pre-made sizes, but if you can't find the right fit for your setup, you can also do a custom order and build it exactly the way you want it. There's also a subtle bezel around the chair mat that allows your office chair to easily roll on and off of it. And each mat comes with a variety of different bumper sizes, so whether you have a hardwood floor or a shag carpet or anything in between, you'll be able to fit this perfectly into your space. Vitraza has also started venturing out into other aspects of the desk setup, offering different leather and wood premium accessories. Things like monitor risers, headphones, stands, valet trays, and footrests. Make sure to head down to the first link down in the description if you want to pick up any of Vitraza's products for yourself. Huge shout out to them again for sponsoring this video and without any further ado, let's get on to my photo and video setup. All right, powering this setup is my 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is the one with the M1 Max chip, 64 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage. This laptop has seriously become my favorite piece of tech that I own. I bought it about a year ago and I use it seriously every single day and it makes all of my workflows just so much faster and easier to get through. I know that there's new M2 versions of these laptops out now, but honestly the M1 Max chip that I have is still way faster than anything that I need. And honestly, if you're looking for my opinion, I think if you can find the M1 Pro or the M1 Max versions of these laptops, like on a discount or on sale somewhere or secondhand, um, I definitely recommend picking one of them up over the newer M2 versions. My MacBook is sitting in this walnut laptop stand I got from the hardware company a few months ago. I think it looks really nice and it gives me a place to store my MacBook when I'm using it at my desk. My MacBook then runs into this Thunderbolt dock. The one I have is from CalDigit. It is their newer TS4 version. This not only charges my MacBook, but it also gives me extra ports to plug in things like my keyboard and mouse and my monitor. Underneath my Thunderbolt dock, I have this four terabyte G drive. I purely use this for backups. Um, whenever I finish a video project or a set of photos, they all get stored on here. For my keyboard, I am using uh, the Halo 96, which is also from Numfi. It has their G Pro V2 switches in it. And here's a quick sound test. Again, I have nothing but praise for Numfi and their keyboards. As someone who has tried a bunch of different mechanical keyboards from like Keychron and uh, Glorious, I gotta say these ones are my favorite and that's why they have taken up both slots on both desks for my keyboard of choice. For my mouse, I have the Logitech MX Master 3S, just like everyone else who has a Mac, um, that is the mouse that I'm using. And to be honest, and this might be a little bit of a spicy take, but I don't really like the MX Master 3S uh, mouse. I just find it large and heavy and clunky. I would use another Logitech G Pro X Superlight mouse, but every time I've tried uh, to use that mouse on a Mac, I just have a ton of issues with delay and lag. So. For right now, I am stuck with the MX Master 3S because I refuse to use a Magic Mouse because they are dumb. <laughs> My keyboard and mouse are sitting on a gray Razer Pro Glide mouse pad. And to be honest, this mouse pad looks great in photos and videos, but in person, it can look a little rough around the edges. So I am on the hunt for a new gray simple mouse pad like this. So if you know of any that I could try out, make sure to leave your recommendations in the comments below. Again, just like every other person with a Mac desk setup, I'm using an Apple Studio display for my monitor. My particular version has the nano texture and the tilt and height adjustment on it. Honestly, uh, this monitor gets a lot of crap, but it is probably one of my favorite pieces of tech that I own. And I think it's definitely worth the investment if you're serious about photo and video editing. I'd say you could probably skip the tilt and height adjustment and just go for like a monitor riser like I showed off from Vitraza. But the nano texture, if you can swing it, it does really come in handy, especially if you're someone who edits a lot underneath like studio lights like these. On top of my studio display, I have a screen bar. This particular one is from BenQ and it is their Halo model. This is essentially a desk lamp that you can set 
on top of your monitor to light up your desk and this particular monitor also adds bias lighting behind your monitor. Um, this comes in handy a lot when I'm editing late at night because adding that bias lighting behind the screen helps to reduce the, the eye strain from the, from the monitor. For audio, I do have a pair of AirPods Maxes, but to be honest, these have become more of a decoration these days um, because they're always dead because I forget to charge them and I refuse to use the dumb purse case that it came with. So to be honest, uh, the speakers in the studio display have been more than enough for me and so I mostly use them when I'm editing and listening to music. I do have my AirPods Max though sitting on this nice walnut headphone stand that we talked about earlier from Vitraza and next to that I do have Vitraza's walnut monitor riser. I don't use it to raise my monitor because I do have the tilt and height adjustment uh, stand for my studio display but I do use it as a place to store my iPad right underneath the monitor, and I think it looks pretty good. Okay, now to address the elephant in this setup, which is my white desk shelf. Um, this particular one I bought at Ikea like years ago, maybe three or four years ago. Unfortunately, they have discontinued it, but the closest thing that you can find now is the Ekby Alex that I showed off in the gaming setup. They have a few other monitor risers now. They have some smaller ones with like a single like drawer for like pens, but unfortunately they don't make this particular one anymore. For decorations, I have two plants on this desk. They are both from Target because Target has the superior fake plants in my opinion. RIP IKEA fake plants. I then also have another film camera. For my chair, I'm using the brown leather Aleph Jaw and because I forgot to mention it, the chair on the gaming setup side is from Odin Link. It's one that they sent me a few years ago and I just keep using because it's pretty comfortable. For those of you who have followed me for a while over on Instagram, you probably know that I used to have a Herman Miller M-Body chair. I unfortunately uh, decided to sell it a few months back and immediately regretted it. So if Herman Miller somehow stumbles upon this video, please sponsor me. I missed my M-Body chair and I would love it to pieces and I would promote it to the day I die. So <laughs> send me a chair, I would love it. Or give me a discount because they're expensive and I would appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, and that's it. Those are my desk setups going into the rest of 2023. Let me know what you think of them down below in the comments. Um, and if you like this video, make sure to leave it a like and to subscribe for more. I got lots of fun videos coming up, so you're not gonna wanna miss them. And thanks again to Vitraza for sponsoring this video, and I will catch you guys real soon. See ya.